Hey everyone, thank you for um, being online today. Before we get started, we just want to make sure that you can hear us okay. So if you can hear me speaking, will you just raise your hands and that lets us know that you can hear us talking. Awesome. Thank you. Today is September 15th, 2020 and the time is 3.01 p.m. Welcome and thank you for attending the Board of Chiropractic Examiners Stakeholder Meeting via webinar today. Before we get started, we would like to introduce the staff members from the Division of Professions and Occupation that are present on this webinar. My name is Darcy Magnuson and I'm a regulatory analyst with the division. Also attending is Jenny Alber, Senior Program Director, Zen Mayhew, Program Director, Yukon Morford, Program Director, and Elena Kemp, Regulatory Coordinator. Uh, we will be facilitating the stakeholder meeting today. In compliance with the governor's orders regarding COVID-19, the, the division has transitioned to a platform that is 100% virtual, and we appreciate your flexibility. As many of you have been to DORA stakeholder meetings before, we would like to reiterate the importance of your comments today. DORA makes decisions every day that may affect your life and your business. Your input is vital in the rulemaking process. Throughout this process, our goal is to create regulations that clarify and explain legislation, ensure minimum competency to enter and continue to practice, and provide only what is absolutely necessary for consumer protection without creating unnecessary barriers to the marketplace. Your input will be part of the information that goes to the board as it considers adopting revisions to rules. More specifically, we'll be discussing the implementation of House Bill 2012-10, Sunset Review, which continues regulation of chiropractors and makes changes to the Chiropractic Examiner's Practice Act, Colorado House Bill 21326 concerns endorsements, creates an occupational credential portability program, and Colorado Senate Bill 2102 requires providers to disclose discipline or convictions of sexual misconduct. The Board of Chiropractic Examiners would also like to gather your feedback on any additional rules that should be considered for revisions. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the board's website at a later date. As this stakeholder meeting is being held solely via webinar, please raise your hand by using the hand icon if you would like to speak, and we will unmute your line so you will be heard by everyone. Or you can type your comment in the question section and we will read it aloud. For anyone that is planning to provide comments, please state your name and who you represent. Feel free to provide either general comments on the rules, changes, or specific comments on the proposed language. Keep your comments limited to three to five minutes or less, and try not to repeat something that was already said. Stating that you're in full agreement with someone else works just fine and will be noted. If you are using audio through your computer, please remember to put any phones on vibrate or turn them off. And whether you are using computer or phone audio, try to keep background noises to a minimum when speaking. So at this time, we will go ahead and open the floor for public comments. And like I said, you can raise your hand or type in a question or a comment, um, and we will monitor it that way and, and unmute you if you'd like to speak or read the comments out loud. Uh, Rachel Wentz, I see that your hand is raised. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. You're unmuted on our end, so go ahead. Perfect. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thanks. Um, I just have a uh, kind of a point of clarification. I'm Rachel Wentz, the Executive Director of the Colorado Chiropractic Association. Um, and so you had mentioned in your opening comments that there was also potential for discussion for other rules as well. Is it, are we specifically discussing these rules right now proposed in front of us, or is this an open discussion on all rules? So the meeting was noticed for the specific rules. If you have questions or comments on other rules, you're welcome to send those and we can address those too, which would probably require additional stakeholder engagement. Gotcha. Okay. That help. Yes. So 
I mean, we had submitted some comments um, previously from the last stakeholder meeting that at least specifically regarding like sunset itself, um, you know, we had submitted uh, information like rule one might want to also be updated and addressed <laughs> to bring it up to date since it is out of date. Um, otherwise, we were okay with the proposed changes in rule eight, technically 1.8 regarding what you guys had said, but Again, I just want to make sure like things aren't being necessarily, I don't know, missed or overlooked or something like that. If that makes sense. No, I think that 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 does make sense. Okay, so you guys should have record of our our rule one and then um, eight. We're fine with. Um, in regards to thirty three, the one that you're on right now, I know in the last um, in the emergency rulemaking hearing that they had adopted this language and. Our concern still was we wanted to make sure that there was clarification regarding the number of exams are clarified by time frame of when those dates, those um, examinations from NBCE were created. And so I do want to make sure that we can submit the comment that that policy is being created in hopes that maybe that policy can be adopted at the October 1st board meeting. Okay, Elena, can you type that that comment in just to make sure that we capture it here? Okay, yes, I'm here. So I just want to make sure that I have it correctly. You just, uh, Ms. Wendt, you wanted to um, they make sure that the board considers a policy. And is that going to be under 33 um, subsection A that you're referring to or? Yes, so the National Board of Carpet Examiners, they have four different exams. And so the way that this reads, it makes it look like you could just take one exam and get your chiropractic license. And so at the August emergency rulemaking hearing, they said that they could put in a policy regarding the different four parts of national boards. And so I wanted to see if there's a way that we can make sure see if we could get a, a draft policy for the October 1st board meeting on the number, the four different clarification on the four different requirements for the Darcy, I can address that actually if you don't mind. Hey, uh, Rachel, this sure. is Jenny Over. Um, we are actually in process of working on that policy. Um, okay. Our hope is that we have something ready for the board meeting. Um, if not, it will be shortly after, so at the okay. very next meeting. But we're we're trying really hard to get it, everything pulled together for the October. Perfect. I appreciate that information, and that was my main comment. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't, you know like lost in translation because I know we've all got a lot of things going on working remotely right, right. Like that, so no absolutely absolutely <clears throat> um and it, but I mean I guess those are all my comments I guess other than um my last one would be on the 34 rule 34 is we had talked about potential to draft some language that would give more clarification for what the students and chiropractors could do and we had submitted some draft language to you guys that would probably be a whole like new rule basically in itself because i know the bill basically addressed providing the criteria for the schools and so i just wanted to reiterate we have submitted language on giving a little bit more clarification for what chiropractors and students are allowed to do under a, a student internship program. All right. And as far as the proposed language, those would be kind of our final comments. Again, we've already submitted comments. We have, we understand that the board will be addressing other rules at the October 1st board me meeting. Is, is that correct? Do we know that? Because um, we would have other language for other rules 
not including well, this one. I think they're going to have a discussion first before they yes, submit to yes. There are two that they're going to open for rulemaking in October. Um, okay. And then I cannot remember the exact numbers right now, but yes. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, is any, are there any other comments? I don't see any other hands raised and I don't see any other questions coming through either. Um, we'll give you a couple more minutes in case anyone's mid typing or still thinking. Okay, looks like we have a question. Okay, Dr. Went, um, Dr. Rachel Went, can I ask an unrelated question about another rule that was adopted, the temporary licensure? Where do recent graduates go to apply for temporary licensure? Um, and then I have another question. And from what I understand, I think it's the same. I think it's through the licensing, like any other application. Jenny, do you know the answer to that? From what I understand, I think you're correct. Um, yeah, they would apply like a normal, nor on, on on our system like a normal application but there's a should be and I, I could be wrong something on the web page that actually goes into detail okay and then we have another question um from derek wow sorry if i mispronounced your name for all us licensed chiropractors treating patients are we allowed to use an out on clinical decisions to determine how long it takes to treat a patient or some patient, sorry, or is someone allowed to dictate and tell us how long we can treat a patient? Example, if I am an associate for someone, are they allowed to say I have only X amount of minutes um, to treat a patient, even if the patient may need more time than say said a lot an amount of time? Asking for several associate DCs, thank you. Jenny, um, do you want to chime in on that, or is that something that you think we just need to present for the board? I, I, I would not be able to answer that. That's something I think I would have to look into or present it to the board. I'm not, I don't want to give a wrong answer, so I would, I would have to punt that to the board. And uh, Dr. Wint, is there a normal application? There's not temporary licensure application. Um, if you want to shoot us an email and we can find out the, the answer for sure, I think that'd be probably the best so we're not giving you misinformation on where someone is supposed to apply for the temporary licensure. And then another comment from um, Dr. Wint, any information that you have on that would be very helpful on the temporary licensure with a couple, two to three recent students who are waiting to take their boards. Um, Kelvin Washington submitted questions and comments via email. How and when will they be addressed? So all of the written comments that were submitted via email will be presented to the board prior to the rulemaking hearing um, and will be available at the rulemaking hearing for other stakeholders to see as well. So that's when the board will see them as in advance of the hearing and can be addressed at the hearing by the board. Um, Dr. Went, you can send the, the email to the rulemaking inbox and I will follow up with you. So that's the email address that is on the notice for today's meeting, the Dora underscore DPO underscore rulemaking at state.co.us. Now make sure it gets handled.
any other questions, comments, concerns um, regarding the proposed changes or the process for rulemaking? Yes. Yep, the permanent rulemaking hearing is still set for October 1st. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other hands raised. We only have currently, oh, Suzanne. Um, so Suzanne Hamilton, what time will the rulemaking take place? I'll go through that um, when I close up the meeting. Um, it's on October 1st and the exact time, let me get that for you right now, is, I believe it's at 9.30, Jenny. You wanna correct me if that's wrong, or Elena, or Yukon, anyone who wants to. I think it's at 9.30, but let me verify. I'm double checking for you, Darcy, right now. I'm also looking too. The schedule I have says 9.15 for start time. Yeah, yeah that's what it's on the Secretary of State. So yes, it's 9.15 on October 1st. And um, that'll be noticed on the board's website and the calendar and then an email will be sent out as well. So. Um, Derek Lau, is there a way I can email the board to find out about how long we can take to treat a patient under an associateship. So your question can be presented to the board and the board can address that if relevant at the hearing. Um, but if you want to email the program director to questions can be sent through the board that way, but there's not like a direct email to the, the full board itself. That makes sense. Okay, so I'll give another uh, minute or so, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up unless there are any more questions or comments regarding the proposed changes um, for today that were noticed for today's stakeholder meeting. Okay. So I'm not seeing anyone else that has a hand raised or any more questions that have come through. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you for participating in today's meeting. The stakeholder comments and program recommendations will be presented to the board prior to the formal rulemaking hearing on October 1st, 2020. Um, that concludes the stakeholder meeting and thank you again for your participation.